Hi, I'm Anthony Rako, and welcome to Kingfish Techniques. And that's what we come here for? Another fish about 80, 85 centimetres. Oh yeah, this is a good fish. Here we go! <laughs> During this DVD, you're going to see the three main techniques we use to target the mighty kingfish. Jigging, live bait, and downwind. There'll be rigging segments and lots of hardcore action. So come and enjoy the ride. The mighty yellowtail kingfish can be found right around the southern half of Australia. For the purpose of this DVD, we've concentrated our efforts off the New South Wales coast. We've divided it up into three separate sections. The northern zone, central zone, and southern zone. Now kingfish can be found on offshore reefs from as shallow as 10 meters right out to 200 meters deep. So we've compiled a selection of GPS marks where we think that yellowtail kingfish can be found. So you can go through the DVD, pause it on the GPS marks that can be best found in your area, and get out there and have a crack for yourself. Here we are in the middle of winter and it's absolutely freezing. You can see here we're in the dead of the night, it's about 4.30am and this is the time you have to leave if you want to be serious about kingfish jigging. They're most active right on first light. That's when the bigger ones come out and they're most easiest to catch. So we're going to try and get out there just as the sun's coming up. You can see we've got a full moon in the background, perfect conditions for kingfish jigging. So let's get out there and give it a shot. We've just arrived at our spot, which is about six nautical miles from Crookhaven Heads on the south coast of New South Wales. Now we're going to be dropping these 250 gram bent host jigs from Williamson down over a school of, uh, of kingfish, which we found on the sounder, as you can see by the images on your screen now. Now you can see the current roaring in the background. As they say, no run, no fun. Today we've got the current, so hopefully we get the fun to match. Let's put the jigs down, see so how we go. See Joey's kingfish coming up over here. Looks like a nice fish actually. There you go, lovely fish on a jig. Okay, here you can see Joey on the 250 gram Ben Host jig. Lovely kingfish, about five, six kilos, about 90 centimeters long. Perfect. Just what we came here for. A few more of these. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> 
All right, here with Jerry again, hooked up to another kingfish. This pink jig seems to be doing all the damage this morning. That's why it's really important to be versatile when you're jigging. Use different colors and then switch over to the colors that are working. I've been using the orange one and I haven't got one yet. Um, so I think after Joey's now got two and this one looks like a nice fish as well, I think we'll switch over to the, uh, to the pink ones. Here we see another beautiful kingfish by Joey. Well done, mate. No worries. <laughs> another fish about 80, 85 centimeters. Perfect eating. A little bit smaller than the last one, but a great fish all the same. Again, the pink fish, the, sorry, the pink jig is doing all the damage here. My orange one, not a fish yet. So I'm going to switch over to a pink one. Hopefully, I can catch more fish than Joey soon. Let's see how we go. <laughs> now, you'll see later on exactly how we rig these jigs. They've all got about 800 mil of 80 pound trace on them with a little loop connection at the end. That enables us to have them ready at any point in time. So we pre-rig them all. That way we can change the colors and, and uh, jig types as we see fit. I've just pulled up in a school again. It's really important to use the sounder. Find the school on the sounder. Stop just up, upwind of them, then drifts back over them. Just using an 80 pound outfit today. There's been some bigger fish around. As you saw when we were live baiting a couple weeks ago, we got some fish up to 13 kilos. If we hook one of these on these outfits, we can feel fairly confident that we're gonna land him. That's why we're using the heavier outfits. Selena 2 with a 37 to 60 kilo rod, perfect. Okay, hooked up there, just varied the speed a little bit. Managed to hook up just by getting a little bit faster. Found another little patch of, patch of fish there. Not big though. These fish are sitting a little bit higher in the water column. Oh, we've just landed Nice little kingfish, this one's about 65, 70 centimetres. Perfect for eating, but we've already got a couple in the bag. So no, more, no need to take more than what you need. So we'll let this fella go, fight another day and grow up and hopefully we can catch him later on when he's a nice big fat fella. We've arrived at the well-known spot of Crookhaven known as the Block and Cheese. Now we're going to be dropping these Williamson jigs down in the 300 gram and 250 gram varieties on the new Selena 2 reels, very schmick reels. We'll put them to the test on these 80 pound outfits, hopefully pull up a few stonker kings. On the sounder, they're just starting to show up now, so we'll drop these jigs down and see if we can get one or two. First we're going to try the silver one. because this is going to hopefully replicate the bait fish that they're feeding on down there. But we'll soon find out. So we'll drop this fella down. Now the fish are congregating on the bottom, so it's no point jigging all the way up to the top. It's about 100 meters deep down here, so we're gonna to wanna to work that bottom 20, 30 meters of water. With this colored braid, I can see how far up I'm coming. Every, every time it changes color, I know that's 10 meters. So I'll go through three colors, and then I'm gonna stop and do it all again.
There goes the third colour. Hello right, lads, finally hooked up a, a nice solid little king here, doesn't feel too big but a good fish all the same. We've had to really scope out this area just to find them, it's just not just a matter of stopping in one spot and hoping that they're there. On the sound that you pick up leather jackets and lots of other stuff so it's really critical that you spend the time looking for these fish. Oh, I've got a bit of colour now Dennis. Hey, this might not be the monster fish that we're looking for, but little fish about 60 centimetres. He's got his big brother down here. So we've found the patch, now it's a matter of working them and pull out the bigger fish. So we'll spear this fella back and get another one. Okay, we've got another kingfish on here with a little pink jig. We've dropped down in size a little 100 gram jigs. Fish is just a little undersized, but still good fun. So he's a throwback. So there's definitely some bigger models down there and that's what we're after. You need to be as gentle as possible with these guys trying to release them. Try not to touch them too much, get a, get a cloth and try not to get that, the slime off them because it does affect their release. So let's get down and get another one. While we're waiting for Dennis to hook up another fish, he's doing pretty good over that side. I'll just show you folks at home what this outfit consists of. It's a Selena 2 Akuma. It's brand new on the market. It's a very, very powerful reel. We've got 80 pound braid on ours paired up with the Akuma V-System rod which is rated for 37 to 60 kilo. It's very powerful again. Now we've just got our braid joined here with an Albright knot onto 80 pound of mono which acts as our shock leader. These kings hit very hard so it's important to use braid but you also need a little bit of stretch and that's what that shock leader does. So you can see here I've got about four meters of shock leader and then I just tie it on to a snap swivel. Now what that snap swivel does it allows us to interchange our jigs with the correct colours. Now this silver one is doing okay so far, but if that were to change, I'll need a pink one or a green one. Just a matter of changing it over on the snap. We've got the more pre-rigged in our Williamson bag. So they're all ready to go. There's no mucking around. These Williamson jigs and this setup is very, very good. And uh, definitely required if you want to chase kings on the jig. When you're jigging, it's important to be versatile. When you're using these jigs, now we've only caught a couple of fish, so it does mean that they're active on the colours that we've, we have offered them, but you don't know that that other colour that's still sitting in your bag might be the best one. So we haven't tried a blue one yet, so I'm going to send a blue one down. So that's the biggest thing when you're jigging. You've got to be, remain versatile and most of all patient. So this one's a little bit smaller as well. Dennis has done well on the smaller pink one, which is 150 gram. I'm going to try the 250 gram abyss. So let's see how this fella goes. You can see how deep it is because what we're doing, we're actually fishing on the outside edge of a ledge and then we're coming up over it and the fish seem to be just sitting on that edge of that ledge. So the idea is to rip that jig as fast as you can up that ledge, hope that one of them spot it and start chasing it up. That's why it's important maybe just every now and again just to stop and give them a chance to latch onto it if they spot it. Normally you'll feel them, feel them run into it sometimes when you stop. They might not necessarily eat it, but they'll run into it. Get Dennis on over there. Feels a little bit better, Dennis.
Well done. Nice 70 centimetre king. Beautiful eating these fish. Really top quality. We'll bleed this fish, put him in the ice bag that we've got from Southern Tackle. That keeps the, our fish fresh all day long in the ice. Lovely fish. You can see how healthy and fat these guys are. These guys have been eating really well down here. But just look at the thickness on him. Very, very solid, healthy fish. When you're fishing for kingfish, it pays to be really versatile. We like to have a wide variety of jigs in different size, types and colours. So whatever the kingfish are eating in that particular day, you know that you're going to have the jig that the kingfish like most within your artillery. So we're going to show you how we do that. So at any moment in time, you can switch over to whichever jig the kingfish are eating. All we have is an 80 pound braided outfit again, which is connected with the reverse Albright and a bimini twist double. You'll see a little bit later on in the down rigging section exactly how we make all those connections. So what we have at the end is a top quality snap swivel connected via a uni knot. These Pakula uh, snap swivels are rated to 260 pound test. Really critical to have a good swivel, uh, especially with these kingfish putting on massive pressures that you know is not going to fail on you. So you take your jig, this particular one here is the bent hose variety in 200 gram from Williamson with a simple assist hook attached to it. We take our leader, which in this particular instance is 80 pound, just standard leader, take about a metre, metre of trace like so. We get our little figure eight copper crimp, slide it on. Then we get some protective tubing cut off about an inch of it, make a nice pointy end at the end of our line so it slides through nice and easy, slide on the protective tubing over our line, like so. Now this is the really important part, you need to hook it up through the eye of the solid ring, not the split ring. The split ring can fail over time. The solid ring is a solid connection. It'll never fail on you. So make sure that you pass the actual leader through the solid ring. So we slide that little crimp down. Back through the figure eight little copper crimp. Like so. And secure by clamping down with your crimpers. So that's that bit done. Now we get the other end, similar sort of thing. Make sure the end is nice and pointy. Get our figure eight copper crimp. About an inch of protective sleeving. Slide it through. Back through the figure eight copper crimp. Secure it off by crimping down again. Trim the tag, like so. And that jig is ready to go and target kingfish. We just roll up, keep them in our bag, and we have a whole variety ready to go. So when we choose our jig for the day, put on our snap swivel, clip it over, ready to go, and target those big kings on the deep reefs when you're jigging. Oh, it's a really cold and frosty morning this morning. As you can tell, we're all rugged up. These are the things we do at Banner Brothers to bring you the best fishing action we possibly can. As with all forms of fishing, good bait is absolutely essential. So 
We've got an old striped tuna, as you can see here, that we caught in one of our other sessions, that we're going to be dicing up, using for burley, hopefully getting some bait. Just cut off a little bit of the stripey. We'll cut up into some nice little cubes. So we're just going to use these little pieces of uh, striped tuna. We're going to put the rest in the mulcher. And hopefully we can score a few slimies or yakkers. Both prime kingfish baits. So I'll just cut off these couple here. Leave that one for later. Let's put this in the mulcher. Here we have Valentina on again. Hopefully another slimy. Yes it is. Slimy we much prefer as a preferred bait over yakas, especially for the bigger kingfish. Just say this little device here, D-hooker, it's just basically a piece of metal with a, a hook on the end. And you slide it down to the end of the hook, then just turn the hook upside down, and away you go. And as that happens, I'll pick up this fish and we'll wind this one in. So just to goes to show the effectiveness of a good burly trail. Oh. Goes to show the effectiveness of a good burly trail. We've kept the burly trail going now since we started drifting and now the fish are right with us. All the boats around us are not doing as well as us. Um, that's the effectiveness of that striped tuna, a lot of blood, a lot of oil. And the fish are now just swarming around the boat as Valentina brings up another one. We'll just get the D hooker again. Easy as that. She's away. You can go catch another one. And that is exactly what we're after. And we've got a very good supply of bait now. Now you're probably wondering why we just don't grab the fish with our hands and throw it off. The fish actually have a much better survival rate if we don't touch them at all and leave the slime on the fish, whether it be a yakka, a slimy or whatever it is, they have a much better survival rate. So that's why we use the D hooker, never touch a fish, and those fellas will stay in there all day long, they're a worry in the world. It's very important as well, as you're getting the fish, and especially when there's only a couple on board and you've got a few rods out, don't forget your belly trail. Always give it a hit, make sure you've got a steady stream. If you worry about just pulling in the fish and forget about your belly trail, the schooling fish that are with the other fish that you actually hooked up to, will just go away. They'll stay with the belly trail down the other end and continue feeding. It's really important to keep a steady stream throughout the process and the fish will stay with you the whole time. I'm just going to show you how we put the bait on. The hook that's going to lead closest to the rod is actually sliding that we pin that through the nose of the fish like so. Then we pull the crimp till it's hard up and we just attach the back hook wherever it ends up depending on the size of the bait. So that'll tow along like that. When the fish comes along, away we go. So we'll see if we can get one, eh? Send him down. Oh, darn 
him. Have a good one. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Bad luck, eh? Done the whole show there. We've got a little bit of interest here. Got another rig there? Yep. Yep. Okay. Oh, here we go. Oh, yep. Oh, yes. This is a good one. Get off that reef. You gotta get them out of the reef straight away, these bigger fish. Oh, come on. Oh, don't get them out of that reef straight away. When they've got them busted off, just like Luke, Luke just did. I've got that drag sitting about 18 kilos at the moment. Oh, and he's still pulling it off. Come on, baby. Get out of there. Oh, this is a good fish. Hopefully we can get him up and show you folks at home what this is all about. Because this is a really nice king. So straight away, are you sure? In this DVD, we've caught quite a few big kings up around 2021. 20, I don't know if this one's going to be that big, but it's definitely a good fish. We really sorted him out at the bottom with all that extra pressure. And now he's maybe he's just shaped himself on that slimy, who knows? But geez, he's got some weight, this fish. Okay, I'm getting some line back now. We're not in danger of him stumping us in the reef. We just gotta play it calm when we get him to the top. Try and get a nice little gaff in him. I'll show you folks at home what this is all about. We've got some colour now. Here's a nice one. There you go. Well that is a lovely, lovely fish. Check out that. Here we go. 13 kilos. Oh. 80 pound outfit. Long way up in 80 meters, let me tell you. But that's exactly what we come here for. That is a solid fish. So let's go get a few more of them. Happy days all around. Live baiting for kingfish in up to 100 metres of water calls for all your knots and leader connections to be absolutely perfect if you're going to have any chance of landing those bigger fish from the depths. Now we've got an 80 pound leader here which is connected to our 80 pound Selena outfit with our 6 foot 37 kilo rod. Now you'll see a little bit later, later on in the down rigging section exactly how we do our bimini twist and our reverse Albright which you can see here. So we've got our 80 pound wind on leader first thing we're going to do is connect it to our top quality Pakula uh, ball bearing swivel which is rated up to a 440 pound test. We want serious swivels for this sort of fishing so we know at no point is any of this gear going to fail. So first we get our swivel and we're going to do a simple uni knot. We pass the line through the swivel like so, form a loop in the tag end, lay it along the main line like so then pass our tag through the loop three times. We pull it down like so, lubricate and pull it down onto the swivel. And there you go, that knot will give you up to 95, 100% of the line's uh, breaking strain. So we've got 80 pound leader, that'll give us 75 pounds, no problems. So now we get to the business end of our connections for our live bait rig. We take 80 pound trace, rip off about a metre of line or so, cut, 
there we have it 80 pound high abrasive resistance trace we don't want it to be too stiff because it's live baiting we want the fish to swim around fluorocarbon is not ideal this particular trace the fish can freely swim around whether it be a squid or a, or a, a slimy so just go for a normal standard 80 pound trace uh, for this particular application first we get a size 6 live bait hook and again we'll just simply do a uni knot to connect the hook at the end of the line form our loop pass through the loop three times pull down lubricate and pull down tight onto the hook now depending on the bait size you use would depend on how far we set our second hook now I'll show you exactly why I've already rigged that hook we get our second hook which will be our toe point which will be connected to the nose of the fish we slide it down the leader which is why we haven't connected it to the swivel yet we set up the distance that we want them in our particular application we're using big slimies so about 20 centimeters perfect set the hook about there hold the hook in your left hand or your right hand if you're left-handed wrap the leader around five times the shank of the hook like so then grab the end of your leader and pass it back through the eye pull down and there you have it there is our twin hook rig for live baiting for kingfish now all we need to do is connect it again with the uni knot to our swivel form our loop pass it through the loop three times lubricate slide down to the swivel trim the tag and there you have it ready to go and target those kingfish brutes from the deep okay so we've got our little rigged connection here at the end our leader ready to go now we need to apply our sinker rig to make sure that we get the live baits down to the depths we we'll use this particular little device which has a sliding ring clip on it now we simply pass this the line through the plastic part then we connect our swivel again with a uni knot very simple knot which retains a lot of the line strength that's why we use it all the time lubricate slide down trim the tag easy as that now this little clip enables us to use the correct size sinker so we have one sinker here that you simply just clip on like so and that's ready to go now the fact that it's sliding enables the uh, uh, the bait not to get caught up if a fish takes it he can run the fish can swallow it, and you can set the hook but because of our knot connection down the end of the line it's not going to go any further than the connection where it's connected to the braid that means that we're not going to end up with our live bait up near the surface somewhere and the sinker down the bottom very important uh, for this particular type of uh, rig now the advantage of the clip is that if we need to use a bigger sinker for whatever reason we've got one ready to go here now these bigger ones don't fit on the clip just tie a little piece of string keep it nice and tight so it doesn't get tangled easy as that so this rig is ready to hit the deep offshore reefs and hopefully get a nice big kingfish Proper fresh live bait is absolutely essential if you plan on catching big kingfish. Squid or Southern Calamari are one of the best uh, live baits you can get for kingfish. We're in here at the moment in Jervis Bay, just drifting over some weed beds and some sandbars looking for squid. We're just using a light outfit, you can see here it's just a six pound Akuma outfit, 
with a good quality jig. It's no point using cheap jigs, they don't float right and they often sink this way instead of sitting upright all the time. Really good quality jigs like these Yama shooters are really essential if you want to get squid. So we're using three gram jigs today, fishing in about six meters of water. So all we're going to do, we're going to cast our lines out, drifting behind the, uh, behind the weed beds as Dennis has already started doing over there. And hopefully we'll get a squid or two. We've already got one in the tank. Say good day to him, Davo. So hopefully we'll get another few of them, which are the absolute prime bait for kingfish. And then we'll head out and try and score a big kingy or two. Let's go get them. I've just casted it behind. We're drifting along here at about two knots with the wind, just pushing the boat along nicely. And we're just gonna try and keep the jig about a meter above the seabeds. That's what you wanna do. You don't wanna keep it in there, you just get stuck. You don't want it too high because the squid won't come that far up because they're scared of the predators that are in this area. They keep nice and close to that weed bed. So try and keep your jig just above that, that weed bed. Let it down and that jig will just be floating along nicely just above the weed bed. Every now and again, give it a little bit of a tweak. And hopefully it won't take too long. On a day like today, where it's, you've got a bit of sun, a little bit of clouds, natural colors. Natural colors tend to work most of the time actually, but on a day like today, natural colors really stand out. It's got a double hook up, it's got mine in. I just throw that rod down there for a watch that rod. Air fleece is only just hooked. Oh, oh. Yep. And there we go. Double hook up. You see how just how close that, look he's just hooked on the technical there. Couple shakes and he'll fall straight off. Have a look at that. Little jig. You don't need big jigs all the time. This particular jig has got a faster sink rate. So it sinks a lot quicker, um, which is a lot better for these deeper waters. We're in about six or seven meters here. That's how we can use a little jig like that and still get down to the depth we need. The perfect size for kinging. Just tried a new jig, a smaller one that's a little bit deeper diving. And we've hooked up another calamari here. As you see there, just hooked and beautiful size. There we go, we've got a few more in the in the tank. Squidding is one of the most important parts of catching big kingfish. So it's important to have the right gear and techniques in targeting these kingfish. We've got here a little 10 pound outfit, a little Rapala rod, two to four kilo rated, and a little Kiara reel, which has got 10 pound line on it. Perfect for squid, nice and soft and flexible, exactly what you need when you're fishing for squid. We've got a large variety of squid jigs that we use when we're out there squidding. On different days, different sizes and colors work, very similar to when you're fishing with jigs for kingfish. Same applies with squid. Make sure you have a wide variety and use the particular ones that work. It also doesn't uh, hurt to use a little bit of stimulant, whether it be Stimulate or Edgymax, things like that. They all work great and just entice the squid a little bit more and make them a little bit more active. 
that does entice the leather jackets even more. So if they're around, best to leave the stimulants in the tackle box. Okay, so now we have our bimini twist again, which is done at the end of our braid to, again, just give us a double strand of, of line at the end, which is really important and gives you a much stronger connection than a single strand of braid. We use 15 pound fluorocarbon trace for squid. About 600, 800 mil of trace is required. Clip. And the same knot again that we use for kingfish, the reverse Albright. And we wrap it around the main line 15 times. So this is a lot lighter line, so you want a few more turns than what you normally do. Sometimes 12 suffices, just depends on how thick and what, what will actually work with the size of line that you're using. Uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, when we get to the end, we pass the line through the loop at the end of our double in the braid, like so, and pull down. So it winds along itself till we get to the end. And there you have a nice compressed reverse all bright knot. To lock it off, all we do Do a half hitch along the end. Cut. Attach a squid jig with a uni knot. Form the loop in the end of your leader. Pass it through the loop three times. Pull down, lubricate, trim the tag like so, and that's it. Ready to go and target squid. Let's get back out there. Now we're going to be trolling along with our downrigger out in about 25 metres of water with a live squid bait. Now I'm just going to show you how we put our live squid and what rig we're using. So we're using two small size 4 live bait hooks crimped onto a 130 pound fluorocarbon leader, about a metre of trace, the swivel and then a 100 pound wind on leader which is on our reel. We'll show you, show you a little bit later on while we're at home exactly how to rig this outfit up. So now we're going to put a live squid onto our hook. So I'm going to try and get a decent size one. Oh, ended up with two, but that's alright. Put this fella back in there, he doesn't look very healthy. Okay, now this first hook is actually our toe point. We don't want the second hook to be our toe point, so we put our toe point right at the tip of the hood of the squid, like so. That's our toe point. And then this second hook, we put loose midway along the squid, just nice and easy into the squid like that. Okay, that's it there. He'll travel along, happy as Larry, and he'll swim for a couple of hours and stay live. So we'll just get Aqua to start the boat up. Now we're using a 80 pound outfit. As an absolute minimum, you need 80 pound outfits. These fish in here can get up to 15, 20, 30 kilo even. You don't want to be mucking around with 50 and 40 pound outfits. You'll just get dusted most of the time. Use an 80 pound outfit. We prefer the, uh, the Akuma Selena 2. We've got a V-System rod, which is actually rated up to 130 pound. Nice, solid, short, a lot of stopping power. Exactly what we need for this style of fishing. So we've got our rig out, we've put it back about 20 feet behind the boat with the live squid out. We get the end of our braid and just like so, we wrap the elastic band around the braid. 
Now what this does by wrapping the elastic band around the braid, instead of just keep putting it straight in the clip, it protects the, protects the braid from getting damaged. A lot of people just put the braid straight into a clip, but it can get damaged. So the elastic band prevents it from getting damaged. Okay, so I've got the, uh, the elastic band on the braid now. I've got my reel in free spool, which is very important. Then I come around here and I've got my clip and I put the elastic band in the clip like that, clamp it down and away we go. Now we we'll just get Aqua, turn right and drive down there. I've got my, my bomb here, my lead bomb, which I'm now going to put out. Now the reel's in free spool, very important again. I've got my line counter on zero. I know Aqua is in about 60 feet of water, so I'm going to put this down about 40 feet. So away we go. Okay, there we are there, 41 feet. We flip over our bail arm on our reel. We pull it up so it's nice and tight on the end of the line. And there we have it. Now the idea is the kingfish will come along, he'll grab that squid, the elastic band will snap, this will be free, we'll wind this out of the way, drive the boat away from the reef, which is critical for the larger fish, otherwise they will drag you back into the reef. Begin our fight, hopefully bring it up next to the boat, show you folks at home what it's all about. Let's go get one. Now you can see here on our Furuno 585 sounder, we've got it set on 200 kilohertz frequency. Um, and you can see the actual bomb going along here which tells me exactly what depth it's traveling at. Now we've changed it to feet because the line counter on the downrigger is in feet. So I can see here it's on about 40, 41 feet which is exactly what that line counter is at which is as you saw previously. So as we're getting closer if the rock uh, formations do come up as the ground undulates we'll know exactly where the bomb is and we can get it up out of the way and avoid getting snagged. We've hooked up to a kingfish, it's just nailed the, uh, the large squid here on the downrigger. So Lucas is just bringing up the downrigger and on the other side and we've got Aqua driving the boat away. Um, what this is doing, it's actually helping the fish stay away from this reef. How, how deep are we now, Axe? 91 feet, yep, that's about right. Well, you can see this fish has still got plenty grunt in him. Let's look at the bend in this rod. This is a good fish. So we'll try and get this fish away from the reef, then we'll go to work on him. 95. Oh yeah, this is a good fish. This is a really good fish. You've got to keep his head up and try and pump him up while he's coming with the boat. We're over 100 feet of water now, so hopefully we've got this fish away from the reef enough where he's not going to stump in but he's still got plenty pull on him and plenty weight. I can feel this fish has lots of weight in him. We're definitely putting this gear to the, to the absolute limit here. I've got this drag set on about 8 kilos at the moment. I don't want to go too, too much more than this if I don't have to. Yeah. Hit him in the head. Oh, look at that! That is a solid 20 kilos worth of South Coast Key, and that's what we come here for. And mate, that is fan bloody tastic. Oh, boys, how good is that, eh? Now, what we're actually doing. We're traveling along at about one knot, maybe two knots. And that's the beautiful thing about these ETEX, the fact that we can travel along at about two knots and I can see by the NMEA system that I'm only using one liter of hours. So if we troll here for seven hours, we're gonna use about seven liters of fuel. That's pretty awesome. So as we're trolling along here, along these, along these cliff and reef edges in about 
you know, 70 feet of water. We're going to be trolling along, dragging our squid. We've got our drag set to about 15 kilos of drag, almost up all the way. We'll push it up to 20 a bit later after we hook up. Now the idea is that as soon as we do hook up, we're going to drive the boat away, grab the rod, try and pull the fish out using the boat and the pressure on the reel. Then we'll crank up that drag and get him up to the boat nice and quick. But if we don't do that first initial take and drag him out, Chances are these bigger fish, straight down, see you later. Okay, we've hooked up. You can see Dad here, he's hooked up to another nice kingy. We're driving away from the cliffs. We're gonna try and get him out into deeper water before he tries to stump us. Try and walk him out. Oh, this is a good fish, Dad. Keep at him, Dad. It's a good one. Keep going, Dad. Okay. Come on, stop, baby, stop. Come on, stop. Okay, Dad, you've got to go to work on him. Go to work on him, Dad, that's it. Keep that line tight. This one took off like an absolute rocket, as you just saw on, on film there. Alright Dad, I'm going to put it in neutral, okay? We're in 93 feet of water, so it should be enough. If he goes for another run, you just bear with him, okay? Okay. Alright, here we go. Let's see if we can get this fish up next to the boat. He's doing well, Dad. Keep at him. It's a nice fish, Dad. There he is. There he is. Boy, it's a monster. Just watch the engine. Kingfish. We lip guffed this fish, so we should be able to let him go because we've got plenty tucker in the box. But how's that for a South Coast Kingfish, eh? Oh, that's another 20 kilo model right there. Thank you very much. Dad, here's your fish. Hold him up. <laughs> Put your hand underneath. Put this one underneath. Absolutely amazing stuff. So, we'll turn the camera off for a sec. We're gonna take some happy snaps and we'll get you again when we're letting this fish go. We've had a couple of fantastic days fishing. We managed to get two kingfish 
around the 20 kilo mark, another one around 13 kilos. You cannot get better than that. Of all the techniques you'll see us use to target kingfish in this DVD, downrigging is by far the most demanding on your tackle. It calls for your leaders, knots and terminal connections to be absolutely perfect if you're going to have any chance of dragging these kingfish brutes from only 20 or 25 metres of water. These particular outfits that we use are 80 pound outfits and we're going to show you how we rig them to make sure that you can retain 100% of the, of the line strength. So let's go through the process now. Here we have an 80 pound outfit on an um, 80 pound braided line on a Salina 2. Now these particular reels can hold about 250 metres of 80 pound braid, which is plenty for the fishing that we're doing. We've got it on a 37 to 60 kilo V-system rod, nice, short, about five foot or so. It gives you much more pulling power when they're short like this. Exactly what you need when you're fishing only shallow water. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to do a bimini twist. First, we're going to start off with a bimini twist, which is going to form a double at the end of our braided line. This is going to give us a double strand of line to connect our leader to, which is much stronger than just connecting it with a single strand of braid. Now I'm lucky today, I've got Ed who's going to give us a hand to do this knot, but you can do it by yourself by simply placing the rod in a rod holder and using another fixed object. Okay, so I'll pass the rod over to Ed. He's going to whack it in the rod holder for me. Thanks, Ed. Okay, so give yourself plenty of line to work with. Take off about two metres of line. Like so. Okay, so here we have it. Just like so. And then you start twisting the line. One, two, three. 37, 38, 39. 40, 41, 42, 43. 43 bimini turn twist. So we've got our turns done. Get Ed to wind it up a bit. And then we'll get Ed to come around and hold this end of the knot so we can actually do the bimini itself. Okay, just whack your finger in there, Ed. We'll get him to pull that nice and tight. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna split these two ends, forming the knot to slide up and compact up one end. When it's nice and compacted, then we get our second strand, which is our tag end here, and turn it down the knot like so, and it slides down. There you have it. Then you just simply half hitch it over each strand on one side. The other side. And then a double over both of them. Like so, slide it down. And there you have it. That is our bimini complete. Ready to connect our leader knot to. Okay, so for down rigging, we like to use a little bit stronger than normal. We're using 80 pound braid, so we're gonna use a 100 pound fluorocarbon leader um, for our wind on leader, which is gonna be about four meters long. So we'll get Ed to pull off about four meters. One, two, three, four, cut that there. Now we're gonna connect the bimini twist, or our double at the end of our braided line, to our 100 pound fluorocarbon leader. Now the way we do that is with the reverse Albright knot. You simply take the double strand of braid at the end, you lay the fluorocarbon along it, and we're gonna wind it around 12 times. You don't need to put it through or anything, just 12 times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. When we've got our 12 wraps around our fluorocarbon, we get the tag end of our leader and we pass it through the loop at the end, like so. And we're gonna slide them all down together. You can see it's starting to bunch up as we pull down. Now you do need to pull 
both strands of the leader as you're doing this until you can't go no more then you let go of the tag end and simply pull the leader itself and you'll see this start to bunch up now this is a very strong knot but you do need to apply a lot of force so I'm going to give Ed to give us a hand and pull that in and there you have it you can see that knot is really bunched up nice and tight perfect and exactly what you need if that pulls too easy a fish will pull it too easy you need to make sure it's nice and tight and just to log it off you put two hitches that side and close it up that just locks off the knot get your scissors or your braid cutters cut it there's our leader connection complete now we'll get Ed to wind this line up which is basically going to wind through the rod. It's a nice and neat knot, so it's going to go through the rod, no worries at all. Now to do our leader connection for the actual business end of the outfit, take about a metre of trace. Again, 100 pound fluorocarbon. The kingfish will go down, they're dogged fighters. They're going to go through the reefs. You want fluorocarbon as a minimum. So when they do rub against the rocks, you're going to have as much chance as possible so you don't bust off. We're going to take a very good quality, high um, strength uh, ball bearing swivel, extremely important. These ones here are rated to 440 pound, very strong and required. You're going to put some massive pressures on these fish as you'll see in a moment. So it's really critical that you have a very good quality ball bearing swivel. The, the cheaper ones will break. So we'll get out our swivel. Now, we prefer the crimp connection for fluorocarbon. Um, it just gives you a much neater connection when it comes to terminal tackle. So we've got our little crimp in here. We put our crimp through the figure eight copper crimp there. We pass it through the eye of our swivel. We pass it through the eye again to form a Flemish like so pull that down nice and tight just gives you double strength at the end where the maximum uh, amount of pressure is going to be applied so again same principle with the double two strands is better than one so you pull up that nice and tight like that then we simply get our crimping pliers and crimp down on the figure eight. Okay, trim our tag in. We don't want that to get singled up. It's not gonna pull through. So get it nice and close to the copper crimp. So we've connected our swivel. Next, we're gonna connect our hooks. Take two size six hooks, live bait hooks. They're much stronger than the standard size hooks. Very important that you get a nice thick gauge hook for this particular application. The size of your hook can vary depending on the size of the bait you're using, uh, but for the squid that you've seen in the DVD, this particular size six works just about perfect. Okay, so the first thing that we do is we slide a small piece of heat shrink, which is about 1.5 centimeters long, down onto the fluorocarbon. Now you'll see why in a moment. We'll just leave that down there for now. Then we get our hook. Very important to face the hook end up and slide the leader onto the hook eye like so. Then we've get, we get a aluminium crimp and slide that on to the 100 pound fluorocarbon. Now the size of the squid we use is about that long so what we're going to do, we're going to fix this little crimp off about 25 centimetres down the uh, fluorocarbon leader. We're going to fix it off. Like so. Okay, we've done that. Now we bring our hook back down here and our heat shrink down there. We slide the heat shrink over the crimp and the hook. Now this is gonna form 
our tow point, like so. So there's our tow point. That hook won't slide down, so when we're pulling the squid from that particular point, or the slimy from the nose, we know that that's not going to go anywhere. Then we put our hook that's set back further in the fish or the squid. We simply do that. Again, a figure eight copper crimp. Slide it onto the 100 pound fluorocarbon. Get our size six hook again. Flemish eye. Again, double is better than one. Like so. Back through the figure eight, copper crimp. And fix off the copper crimp at the end. Trim off the tag, and there you have our leader connection. Starting off with our hook to our fixed toe point to our swivel down here. Now we rig up about 10 or 15 of these and just keep them in a little satchel in the boat because you do go through them as you lose fish, you cut fish off, things happen, so it's really important to have these ready to go. That whole exercise took about four or five minutes, so it's really important to make sure that you've got these spare so you're not wasting, wasting time when you're out in the water. Now all you need to do is connect it to your leader. Some people prefer to connect this part of the rig with a snap swivel. For this particular applica application, when we're putting massive pressures in such shallow water, we recommend that you don't use a snap swivel and that you just crimp it straight on to the actual ball bearing swivel itself. So we've slid on our copper um, figure eight crimp again through the other ball bearing swivel. Flemish eye connection, as always. Now you can also use a little bit of um, line protector. You'll see later on we will use that application in jigging. But for this particular application, the Flemish eye is fine. Crimp the copper sleeve. And there you have it, ready to go and target kingfish. There's one thing that a lot of people don't do, which you must do if you're serious about landing these bigger fish, and that's test your gear. We just did a whole series of knots. We don't know how perfect they are by fact, only by experience of what we've done. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna put our drag tester on here and just see how much pressure we can apply on the reel by locking up the drag and hopefully nothing breaks. I'd rather it break at home than break when we're out in the water connected to the fish of a lifetime. So we've got Ed hooked up to the scales over there. We've got all our knots out of the rod. These particular reels can put up to 25 kilos of pressure and that will only increase as the spool empties. So we're gonna do it as tight as we can and see how much pressure we can put on the outfit without breaking any knots. Okay, that's pretty tight now. So let's see how we go. Right, now that was a pretty Big amount of pressure. Like we was just struggling to stand up and hold that outfit up. How much pressure, Ed? Uh, 21. About 21 kilos of pressure, and not one of the knots failed, and the outfit held together in one piece. So this outfit is ready to go chase those big kingfish brutes. Well, there you have it. Now you should have all the techniques you need to get out there and target those kings for yourself. So I'll see you out in the water.